Hello and welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Beretz and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn how to play the new Martin Wallace game called Rocket Man, published by Phalanx Games. It's a game, deck building game about uh, commercial flights to space, but before we start I have to say everything you're about to see is a prototype version. This video has been made before the Kickstarter campaign and all the rules are the pre-Kickstarter version. So in the final version of the game, the rules may change slightly. In that case, we'll make another video, but this one is a prototype version and here is how it plays. First, place the game board in the middle of the table. Place the Luna token and the Mars token on the corresponding spaces on the game board. Separate these asset cards by color Take these asset 1 cards, the deck of teal cards, and then one threat card of each type. There are three types, asteroid impact, pandemic and climate change. Shuffle all these cards together and form the teal deck. Then take these pink asset 2 cards and all the remaining threat cards, shuffle them together and form the pink deck. Now take the pink deck and place it face down. And then take the teal deck and place it on top of the pink deck and this way you create the draw deck. Place the draw deck onto this space on the game board and reveal the first six cards face up. Separate the engine cards by their type and place them onto these spaces on the game board. Place the mission success cards onto this area and you don't have to shuffle them now, they will be shuffled during the game. If you play a three player game before creating the draw deck, remove all the cards with this three player icon and in a two player game, also remove all the cards with this two player icon. In addition, in a three player game, remove one random card with this symbol and this symbol from the teal deck, then this multi-purpose spacesuit cards with these symbols and one of these two cards as well. And in a two player game, Randomly remove three cards with this symbol, two cards with this symbol and one card with this symbol from the teal deck and these three specific cards from the pink deck. Then each player chooses a color, then takes the player board, 12 mission cards and all the tokens of the same color. Shuffle all the mission cards, place them on this draw deck space on the player board and draw six cards into your hand. Then draw two random goal cards and keep them secret from other players. Place the scoring markers onto the zero space of the scoring track and randomly determine the starting player. If you get more familiar with the game, you can add two random game variant cards onto this space of the game board. These cards slightly change some of the rules of the game and add some variability to the game. For this instructional video, I will keep them out of the game. Rocket Man is a deck building game about commercial flights to space. Each player starts with a deck of mission cards and each mission card has the list of destination where a player can make a commercial flight. Players use their cards to build a rocket which can fly to that destination and to build more powerful rockets, players will need to buy additional cards and build their decks. Once the rocket is ready, player can launch a mission. They will start their rocket and then draw these mission success cards and move their rocket as many spaces as depicted on these mission success cards. When they reach the destination, their mission is successful. In Rocket Man, players take turns, starting with the randomly chosen first player and then going in a clockwise direction. On your turn, you can perform as many actions as you want and in any order. You can play a card from your hand to the holding area. You would usually do that to get the resources in the top left corner or to use the effect and abilities of the card. You may buy the cards from the display area, either the asset cards or one engine card. The cards you buy are placed to the holding area. Then you can play a mission card and place it onto the mission site and start building the rocket on the launch pad. To build the rocket, you will need to place the cards to the launch pad. When you meet all the requirements, you can launch a mission. With this action, you will launch your rocket, you will draw mission cards and you will try to reach your destination. 
And finally, you can discard any number of cards from your hand without taking any effect. At the end of your turn, you will place cards from the holding area to the discard pile and refill your hand back to 6 cards. When you play the card from your hand, place it to the holding area and then you can gain the effects of the card. At the start of the game you will only have these mission cards and you can only use the resources depicted in the top left corner. You can spend these resources to buy additional cards. The numbers in the circle represent credits. And you will need credits to buy the cards. In addition to credits you will sometimes need a scientific symbol as well. You can find these symbols as resources in the top left corner of the cards as well. There are three science symbols in the game and they correspond to the three major space objects in the game Earth, Moon and Mars. This rocket symbol is not a resource, it is required to launch a mission but I will talk about that in a minute. Later in the game you will also have asset cards and there are several types of these asset cards. Some of them have the action keyword. When you play this card you can either use the resources in the top left corner or use the ability of the card. You cannot use both. Then cards with the one use action keyword can also be used as a resource or you can use the effect of the card but because it's one use action when you use the action on that card remove the card from the game completely. When you play the card which starts with this when you use this card text you can use the resources of this card and also the ability on that card. And finally when you play the card with the launchpad keyword when you play it to the holding area you can only use the resource of that card. However if you have such card on the launchpad and you launch the mission you can use the symbol on that card to boost your rocket during the start and you can also use the ability of that card. During the game you may also acquire these threat cards. They give you a certain number of victory points at the end of the game but other than that they have absolutely no other effect. When you buy a card from the display first you have to choose the card. You can either buy these asset cards, threat cards or engine cards. The cost of the card is at the bottom of the card and some cards also require some scientific symbol as well. To pay for the cost you first need to play cards from your hand to gain resources. Not just credits but also these scientific symbols. If you overpay you don't get any change back. However if you have enough credits and resources you can buy multiple cards during the same turn. Later in the game you may also have these kind of tokens on your player board and they act as credits or one scientific symbol of your choice. If you use these tokens simply flip them to the other side to indicate that that token has been used this turn. The price for these threat cards may increase over the course of the game. Any player who reaches or passes this kind of orange space on the scoring track has to pay the additional resources in order to buy the threat card. For the players who have not reached that space yet the price has not changed. So when you have enough resources to buy a card you can take the card and place it to your holding area. At this time you may not use the resources nor the abilities of that card. It's basically as if you would discard the card into the discard pile. Then immediately refill the empty space with the new card however shift it down so that this X symbol is visible. As I said you may buy multiple cards and when you buy a card when refilling the empty space always shift the card down so that the X symbol is visible because you can buy maximum one card which shows this X symbol. However if you have enough resources you can still buy the cards which don't show that X symbol. As I already mentioned you can buy maximum one engine card per turn. In order to build a rocket you first need to play a mission card. Take a mission card of your choice from your hand and place it on this mission site. The mission card indicates to which destination you can send your mission, either to Earth, Moon or Mars. And it also indicates how many rocket symbols you will need 
to launch the mission to that particular destination. So in our example I need 3 rocket symbols to send a mission to Earth, 5 rocket symbols to send a mission to Moon, and so on and so forth. The third number indicates how many mission success cards you will draw when launching a mission. I will talk about that in a minute. You don't have to choose the destination now, you can make your choice anytime later. This symbol indicates the type of the mission and this is the reward for the successful mission. The cost of placing the card on the mission side is 10 credits. You can either pay with the resources directly on the card or if the card doesn't have those credit resources on itself, you have to play another card from your hand to gain those resources. If you would have any tokens with the credit resources, you can use those as well. When the card you play has more than 10 credits as a resource, you can use 10 credits for placing this card and the remaining credits to pay for other cards that you would place on the launch pad, because for every card you place on the launch pad, you also have to pay 10 credits. The same applies if you would use the token when you flip it to the other side and you get 20 credits. You may use them to place two additional cards to the launch pad. You may never split these payments so that you spend 10 credits for placing a card to the launch pad and then to spend 10 credits for buying a card from the display. When you have no card on the mission side, you may not place any cards to the launch pad. Only after you place a card to the mission side and potentially pay the resources for that card, you may start placing cards to the launch pad. Again, the price for each card on the launch pad is 10 credits and the card can either pay for itself or you have to play other cards or spend tokens to pay for the card. Because you are building a rocket here, you need these rocket symbols and you need as many rocket symbols as depicted for your destination. So if I would decide to go for the moon, I would need 5 rocket symbols. In addition to the cards with the rocket symbol, you may also play cards with a scientific symbol. As I said, all the destinations have one particular symbol associated with the destination. So if I would choose to go to Luna, I need this symbol. Each such symbol will provide a boost during the rocket launch, as we will see in a minute. You can also place these asset cards with the launchpad keyword on the launchpad, and during the mission launch, you will be able to use the symbol as the boost and also the ability on the card. Then you can never place a card with only a monetary value to the launch pad. And you may also never place the threat card on the launch pad. You can have maximum one card on the mission site, but there's no limit to the number of cards you can have on the launch pad. However, you may never have two cards with the same name on the launch pad, even though their symbols might be different. You may never have the cards with the same name. The mission card indicates how many rocket symbols you need to fly to that destination. You have to have equal or higher number of rockets. So I have 1, 3 and 2, that's 6 rocket symbols together, which means I can either fly to Earth or to the Moon. So first, I need to choose my destination now. Place the rocket token on the launch space and place one of your tokens on the selected destination, so in this case I want to fly to Luna. Now, shuffle the mission success cards and you can launch the rocket. First, look at the cards on the launch pad and count up the number of scientific symbols which are associated with your destination. So in this case it's one symbol because I fly to the moon. For each such symbol, move the rocket one space forward. If you would have this resource token from any previous successful mission, you can flip that token face down and use it as another scientific symbol. Now you will start drawing the mission success cards and the number of cards you would draw is indicated on the mission card next to your destination. So in my example I need to draw 4 cards. Draw the mission cards one by one and for each card move the rocket token by the indicated number of spaces. Do not flip all the cards at the same time you have to draw them one by one. You can also use the abilities on the asset cards with this launchpad keyword. However, they have to be placed on the launchpad. You are not allowed to play any other cards from your hand to the launchpad now. It's too late 
the rocket is already in space. When, after drawing a card, you reach the destination, your mission is successful. First, get the bonus from the mission card. In this case, it's a token with two additional rocket symbols. And in case you would already have a token with the rocket symbol, you can add these two numbers together and get a token with a total number. If the total number would be higher than 6, in this case 9, simply use the tokens to indicate the correct number of rocket symbols you have available. So, after taking the bonus from the mission card, remove that mission card from the game completely and place your mission token on the corresponding space on the game board. That space is indicated on the mission card you have just completed. If you are the first to complete that mission, take the higher value of the victory points on that mission space. If you're not the first one, place your token to the indicated space and get the smaller number of victory points. After that, immediately end your turn, discard all the cards from your launch pad and put them to your discard pile, discard all the cards from the holding area and refill your hand up to your hand limit. You can only send one mission to one space over the course of the game, so you would not be allowed to send another mission to the same space. However, you can still send missions to Luna, but send them to a different type of space. The first player who makes it successfully to Luna may take the token, flip it to the other side and place it next to their player board. It's going to be worth one victory point at the end of the game. The same applies for Mars, the first player to get there will take the token, which is worth one point at the end of the game. When you draw the last mission success card and you fail to reach your destination, you fail the mission. Discard all the cards from your launch pad, but you can keep the mission card if you want. Then your turn immediately ends and refill your hand up to your hand limit. Since failing the mission has some serious consequences, after you draw the mission success card and you feel like you're not going to make it to your destination, you can abort the mission. You can only do this before you draw your last mission success card. So if you decide to abort the mission, count the number of mission success cards you have already drawn, in this case three, reduce that number by one, and that's the number of cards you have to discard from your launch pad. You can choose which cards you would discard and those cards go to your holding area. Again, your turn ends immediately and you can refill your hand up to your hand limit. You can discard any number of cards from your hand without taking the effect of those cards. If you wish, you can also discard cards from the launch pad, again, without taking the effect of those cards. When you decide to discard the mission card, you can do so but then you have to discard all cards from the launch pad as well. At the end of the turn, move all the cards from the holding area to the discard pile. Then refill your hand up to your hand limit, which is usually 6 cards, but you can increase your hand limit by gaining these tokens as a reward for a successful mission. When the draw deck gets empty, reshuffle the discard pile and form the new draw deck. Then unflip all tokens back to their color side. All the cards in the launch pad stay where they are and move any shifted cards from their shifted position to their normal position. After that is the next player's turn. The game can end in three different ways. First, if any player reaches or exceeds the score marked on the player board, which is different for different player counts. The game will also end if there is at least one token in each of these 12 spaces on the game board. And when one player, yellow in this case, places fifth or sixth token on the game board and there is at least one token in each location, that player can decide to end the game. It's not mandatory, however that player has the option to end the game, preferably if he is in the leading position. When the end game is triggered, simply finish the current round and then the game is over. Then choose only one of your personal goal cards and you can score additional victory points from that chosen card. You score no victory points from the other card. 
Whoever has the highest score wins the game. So that's how you play the Rocket Man. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.